since Bambara is highly self-fertilizing, in making any genetic cross, we want to ensure that the flowers are emasculated. That is by taking out these sets of 10 stamen that carries the pollen in Bambara groundnut. It's a very tiny flower and very delicate style, so we want to be as careful as much as we can. So once this flower is emasculated, it becomes our female parent. We emasculate so the plant does not self-fertilize because naturally it's a self-fertilizing plant. So we look for an ideal male parent which will be um, a plant whose flowers are just opening. Generally making crosses in Bambara groundnut has been considered very very difficult. The main reason being the tiny nature of the flowers. The flowers are very small, very tiny, so you will need a headband magnifying glasses, like this one I have now, a pair of tweezers and scissors to make genetic crosses. With this, it magnifies the flowers, I can clearly see the stigma and know where my pollen landed, because you want to make sure the pollen is falling directly on the stigma, the very tiny stigma. That's when and only when the cross can be successful. You want to be sure that your pollination is successful. In that case, you maintain a reasonable, fair enough temperature, which I would say is between 25 and 27 degrees. With the protocol we've generated here at the University of Nottingham, you can do your cross. You can emasculate and at the same time complete the crossing within 15 minutes. And on doing that, the success rate we've seen here is as high as 8 to 10%. At the moment, it's an equatorial plant, means it grows within the confines of 12 to 13 hours of day length. So if we can develop materials from this research that can be distributed to farmers in different parts of the world, that is a direct way of making sense. It's a way of contributing to the resource poor farmers who are the ultimate end users of research findings. So it's a direct way of making sense out of science.